2017 was a one way move up. We expected volatility in the beginning of 2018. Some bit of it because of global queues, like uh, rising interest rates globally. Uh, some bit of it was domestic issues as well. Uh, in the beginning of the year, uh, we saw a domestic inflation slowly move up and interest rates begin to move up. And there has been some bit of uh, tightening in the liquidity and the overall system. Second is, I think, imposition of long-term capital gains tax has led to one-time adjustment of asset prices. Finally, I think uh, some bit of uh, oil price increases and the fears that this may lead to higher inflation, uh, some bit of current account deficit, impact on current account deficit and exchange rate, all these are playing in the minds of investors. So these are, I would put it as uh, more short-term concerns on the market direction. Uh, on a medium to longer term basis, we see definitive signs of growth picking up post GST implementation and earlier demonetization issues. Corporate uh, numbers are broadly panning out to be okay. So I would not uh, therefore attribute big concern on the current uh, market correction. Some bit of it was an extension of a unidirectional move that happened on 2017 and some bit of it is in reaction to some of the shorter term issues that we are seeing in the marketplace. We continue to remain very constructive on consumer discretionary, retail and banking, cement, global cyclicals like metals, uh, etc. Where at the margin, uh, I think uh, we have uh, turned a little more positive is IT uh, because of the global growth uh, coming back and spending by the global corporates. Where the improvements have been below our expectations is on the corporate banking sector. While uh, the NCLT framework is helping the banking system to resolve some of the longer term NPA issues, I think uh, one the pace of the resolution has been a bit slow because these are the initial days of NCLT implementation and of course second reason why the delay has been a bit uh, while the recovery has been a bit delayed is that uh, the, there has been few cases of fraud in the banking system which has derailed some of the expectations of the investors. Um, so banking system has been a bit of a yo-yo have, uh, have kind of a two step forward one step backward kind of a issue in the last uh, six months to one year. The challenges, uh, the challenging sectors continue to remain telecom and, uh, and to some extent healthcare sectors. Telecom sector has gone, is going through intense price competition and uh, at the current price levels, the, all the incumbents should be finding it very difficult to make uh, uh, any returns over their cost of equity and this is impacting their share prices. We expect this situation to normalize but again, um, the intent, competitive intensity doesn't seem to be dying down in the nearer term. So that remains challenged. The second sector which continues to remain challenged is the healthcare sector. Most of the Indian healthcare companies continue to get impacted by the global uh, trends on that sector, uh, especially on the generic uh, healthcare uh, products in US. And there we see a lot of uh, headwinds in terms of regulatory hur hurdles as well as competitive intensity. And that's the reason the stocks in both the sectors continue to remain fairly depressed. And uh, while we expect some of these issues will get resolved over a period of time, I think nearer term continues to remain cloudy. The domestic capital goods and the infrastructure related sectors are still going through some kind of a sluggish growth phase. We don't see a definitive recovery. While uh, I can say that today was better than six months back or one year back, but uh, I think uh, the, the capital spending is still not gathered pace in the economy. And therefore, those sectors, I would say, are still a bit early in the cycle. So overall, it's a bit of some, some sectors are continuing to do well. Some are struggling and others are showing signs of recovery, but yet to kind of gather momentum. 
Uh, if you want to kind of understand the current uh, protectionism or trade wars, we have to go back a little bit in history. Uh, the world went through a period of globalization over a period of three decades and the bulk of the benefits of globalization, uh, we can fairly say that it accrued to a lot of emerging market. To some extent, this has impacted growth or the jobs in many of the developed markets and I think ever since the global financial crisis happened, many countries resorted to some kind of protectionism or barriers. And many of these things, methods are followed by various economies to kind of bring back some of those lost industrial and services growth to the local um, economy and that I think is continuing to play out as we speak. And we, see, we hear more of that in the recent days because of uh, the, the kind of intensive trade uh, measures and countermeasures between uh, US and uh, China. But I think the issue is even beyond these two countries, like more and more countries, whether it is Brexit or even India for that matter, has imposed a lot of anti-dumping uh, duties across various uh, product categories. Uh, it's very tough to kind of quantify this issue in the nearer term because uh, it can't be said with clear-cut view that this is positive or negative. Uh, while sentimentally it seemed to kind of uh, impact the investors' uh, sentiments, especially towards emerging markets, because emerging markets benefited from globalization. So uh, some bit of reverse globalization or protectionism can kind of hurt it a bit sentimentally. But uh, it varies from sector to sector and how those companies uh, react. But suffice to say that this process of recalibration or rebalancing is not over. I think it will continue for a, a little more time, maybe a few more years before it cools off. But, uh, but companies are getting impacted in different surveys across uh, sectors. Some, some companies may benefit by anti-dumping duty, um, but some may uh, hurt because of withdrawal of exports, incentivization, etc. So we have to go on a case-by-case -case basis and to understand the impact of the rising protectionism across uh, companies. From a, but from a broad picture perspective, uh, this, it does pull down the sentiments in the shorter term. Uh, to be fair, uh, we welcome service categorization and product rationalization move in terms of uh, what they advised on the equity side. Uh, the market was definitely in dire need of some bit of uh, normalization of uh, or categorization of products. The ranges are broadly okay in most categories. For example, whether it's in the large cap or a mid cap or small cap, there are clear specified ranges on how the funds uh, need to be positioned and they are not uh, uh, restraining or constraining at all. Uh, the multi-cap categories again uh, unconstrained investment category and that's what that, what, that again is not a big constraint. Uh, probably in the large and mid cap fund category they have been a bit more uh, restrictive. That is the only one fund category where we see uh, some bit of an issue in terms of uh, the maneuverability. But there again that's like one in seven or eight categories so it's not a big deal. Uh, we also believe that the product uh, categorization and rationalization and the prescription of the norms by the SEBI is an evolving process and over a period of time some bit of uh, tweaking or mild change in these uh, things will help. So overall uh, to sum it up we don't see a big issue. Most of our funds are already in compliant of the new norms and we don't foresee a significant uh, change in our allocation, asset allocation within the funds. Uh, because of SEBI's uh, new norms in terms of uh, investment allocations. In terms of positives or tailwinds for the market, clearly corporate earnings is turning around the corner post demonetization and GST. We see a gradual and definitive improvement of earnings across sectors, uh, whether it is automobiles, auto ancillaries, cement, construction, consumer durables uh, and metals, retail banking and even to some extent corporate banking. Across the board we are seeing potential improvement in earning growth and that's the primary and fundamental tailwind which the market has at this point of uh, time. 
market is also at this juncture is more broad based growth than a very narrow growth two years back or three years back the number of companies that were growing were a lot less today we probably are uh, potentially seeing much more number of companies beginning to uh, deliver growth time third is uh, uh, the recent corrections have made valuations more affordable uh, while uh, the large caps uh, have always remained uh, within the zone of uh, average valuation probably the mid caps and small caps have run a bit ahead of valuations and the corrections are helping them to kind of settle to a more normal valuation of course one can argue that the valuations have to correct a little bit more but uh, we are seeing even uh, emergence of investment opportunities in the mid and small size uh, small cap segments of the market as well so market corrections in some sense has been a, um, has kind of given some confidence to the investors that we are not chasing in exorbitantly valued companies so that's another comfort at this point of time in terms of challenges uh, some bit of macro challenges oil is uh, spiking up it's uh, 70 72 dollar at this point of time and india is not uh, is uh, inversely correlated to oil prices the macro fundamentals and the interest rates are uh, hardening domestically as well while um, the while the gsec yields are kind of yo-yoing a bit and finally in terms of sentiments uh, the current year we are going to go through some bit of political volatility as three states are going into election Karnataka in May and a couple of other states, Rajasthan and MP, towards the later part of the year. I think at this point of time, markets get, uh, market sentiments get a little bit impacted by the political uncertainty because some of the state elections therefore have some clue on the central elections next year and investors are keenly reading into some of these things. We think uh, the high frequent data point that come around elections will keep, uh, uh, keep, keep the markets on toes and, uh, and that's generally not uh, a very good sign. So kind of weak sentiments is not a bit of a good sign from a shorter term perspective. So that is a, another headwind. So overall I would say while fundamentals are looking positive, sentiments have become a bit weak at this point of time uh, to kind of summarize the positive and the negative. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.